Space Chronicles in partnership with the European Space Agency. The mannequin piece, a star attraction in Brussels. This replica of a 17th century statue is what you'd call small but perfectly formed. And a little on the extrovert side too. In a clean room near Anvers, you find another miniature wonder, although a little more discreet. It's the size of a washing machine, a bit heavier, 120 to 150 kilos. These four things are the reaction wheels of the satellites and they are used to, to control the attitude of the satellite. It can do a lot more than wash your clothes. The satellite has to be able to move around its three axes in order to point towards the targets. A snowy spring day in the Belgian Ardennes. This is the Redu satellite tracking station. The local farmers used to say, yeah, they're radars. In fact, they're antennas that follow satellites and have no military link at all. This station's been going for 40 years, and the spot was chosen because the natural landscape forms a kind of bowl. At the time, in 68, at the end of the 60s, satellite signals were weaker, so they were looking for a sheltered spot. Redu is an elder statesman among the European Space Agency's tracking stations, continuing to receive signals from several different sources. The site is also used as the control center for a mission called Proba-1, this is the elder brother of the tiny satellite we saw back in Anvers. There are micro or mini satellites. It depends if they're below 120 kilos, which it is. Proba 1 is 94 kilos, so it's a micro satellite. We can cut costs and at the same time we want the satellite to be really advanced and autonomous. By cutting costs, we also open the way for a certain number of industrial partners, small and medium-sized companies who want to control a project from start to finish. The European Space Agency conceived the Proba-1 mission as a way to test technology that allows satellites to be more autonomous with the minimum of intervention from the ground. It was put on a polar orbit 700 kilometers above the Earth. Four, three, two, one, now. Predicted to last two years, the Proba-1 satellite has now been working for seven. Its main mission is Earth observation using its hyperspectral spectrometer that offers several images in different frequency bands that go from the visible to the near infrared. With its polar orbit, Proba can take photographs of a given point on Earth every six days. That allows the around 200 scientific groups involved to have very regular updates on their given subject. There's a high-resolution black-and-white camera that offers good quality small exposures. Scientists' requests for observation can be met very quickly, within 24 or 48 hours maximum, much faster than the delay of weeks or months that's needed for larger satellites. We tried to do a set of images because we haven't got enough precise control over how the satellite is pointed. So I put in a correction on the coordinates so that the next set of images are made with a new set of numbers and the best positioning possible. Thanks to GPS and a star tracker system, the satellite is able to know where it is. Once the corrected coordinates come up from the Redu tracking station, it can then reposition itself. The satellite has what some may regard as a rather surprising system of moving itself around. 
The instruments themselves don't move around on board the satellite. Instead, it's the whole body, the cube of the satellite, that moves around. That's thanks to its reaction wheels. These are driven by electric motors with one on each plane of movement. And in order to move the satellite around a given axis, you just have to accelerate the wheel that's in the right plane. The satellite then reacts by turning in the other direction, and in order to stop it, you just slow the wheel down to its original speed. Prober 1's little brother, Prober 2, being built in Anvers, has the same system. You can't see the wheels, but you can certainly hear them. This one is due for launch at the end of the year as a secondary satellite in the SMOS Earth Observation Mission. Building such a satellite is, uh, is a big endeavour because uh, it's a very complex instrument, but for the size of our company uh, it's very feasible to do so. And uh, in, by doing such uh, small satellites uh, we are able to work really at a system, uh, complex uh, system level. So are these kind of low-cost satellites? In a sense, yes, they offer smaller countries or companies access to space. But in other ways, no, they're highly sophisticated devices that are effectively made to measure. Proba 1 is a demonstration of satellite autonomy technology with an Earth observation instrument on board. Proba 2 is all about miniaturization, to go further with this idea of autonomy, and this time there are instruments for observing the sun, so it's a combination of the two. Proba 3 is a real technological showcase to demonstrate formation flying, that's to say creating large orbiting structures not by building one large satellite, but by using several satellites that work together. The tests into formation flying of satellites will open the way for Darwin and Zeus missions involving several spacecraft. At the start, the idea was to use platforms with a limited cost in order to demonstrate new technologies in orbit. Now technology has developed so much in recent years that we can also carry out very specific missions with these little satellites, missions with just one instrument with one very specific application. Back at Redu, the snow has given way to blue skies. Forty years of service, and the station still has a long life ahead of it, thanks to missions like Prober.